So today, uh, let us continue our discussion on capillary electrophoresis, uh, which is a extended uh, discussion on electrophoresis because electrophoretic techniques are classified into several ways. And among the several electrophoretic techniques, capillary electrophoresis is one of the important techniques uh, which is widely employed for both qualitative and quantitative analysis. So, uh, in today's presentation, let me concentrate on uh, the instrumentation of capillary electrophoresis. And apart from capillary electrophoresis, even we can perform capillary zone electrophoresis uh, in order to separate the cations and anions. And uh, during the separation of cations and anions, the principle itself is not going to be suitable for the separation of neutrals. And the neutrals will be remaining stationary. And this is also the state in capillary zone electrophoresis. And even in capillary zone electrophoresis, we can reverse the order of elution. Under the normal condition, you will be expecting cations to be eluted first. Uh, then neutral species will be eluted as a single band or they remain as stationary. Then at last, anions will be eluted. And this order of elution can be reversed simply. And uh, that will be explained in the capillary zone electrophoresis, how the reverse of order will be done with respect to elution. Another important uh, capillary electrophoretic technique is micellar electrokinetic chromatography denoted by MEKC and the capillary gel electrophoresis, capillary electrochromatography. So principle and theory of uh, capillary zone electrophoresis, MEKC, CGE, and CEC, let us discuss one by one. So first, let us go back to the principle of capillary electrophoretic technique. Capillary electrophoretic technique is a, a separation technique in which a capillary tube is employed. And in the capillary tube, uh, the conductive medium is retained, or conductive medium may be such as buffer, which will be high ionic strength or low ionic strength buffer solution which will be having fixed amount of cationic and anionic species. So uh, after creating the electric field, the migration or uh, the movement of the solutes based on their charge to size ratio will be expected uh, towards the cathode and anode. So uh, this is the fundamental principle of capillary electrophoresis. So capillary tube is going to be applied there. So uh, uh, in addition to this principle, in addition to the concept of the theory of capillary electrophoresis, instrumental aspects are also very, very important. So what are the components of instrumentation in capillary electrophoresis we should discuss? And primarily uh, power supply unit is required. The electrodes are required in order to function as anode and cathode. The sample oil is required to fill the sample solution of the sample and uh, by means of which we will be introducing the sample into the capillary tube. And a capillary tube is a very, very important component because uh, in exactly where the separation is going to be taken place. And the detector is required to detect the solutes. What are the solutes getting diluted from the capillary tube? So let us discuss each and every component one by one. So this is a schematic uh, in all uh, uh, in the employment of capillary electrophoretic technique. So as you know, and as the name is implying that the capillary electrophoretic technique will be implying a capillary tube, you can see a red colored object presented here is a capillary tube. And this capillary tube is uh, immersed into a source reservoir uh, from the one end and the other end of the capillary tube has been immersed into the destination reservoir. The blue colored uh, component, the blue colored solution present in these two reservoir is nothing but the buffer. The same buffers are present. So both the terminals of the capillary tube have been immersed into the buffer solution of known ionic strain or of known concentration. And the source reservoir has, has been immersed by the anode and the destination reservoir has been immersed by the cathode. The terminals of the anode and the cathode are connected to the positive and negative terminal of the power supply device. That's what the anode is called as positively charged electrode and the cathode is called as negatively charged electrode. Uh, the sample is going to be introduced into the capillary tube in two ways. 
So let us discuss that later. So capillary tube is present here and there will be direct contact between the source reservoir and the sample reservoir so that the sample is going to be introduced into the capillary tube directly from the source reservoir. So the capillary tube, the terminal of the capillary tube immersed into the source reservoir will be having a connection with the sample reservoir and by means of which sample components are going to be introduced into the capillary tube. So after the application of the electric field by means of power supply device, uh, the electric field is generated in the capillary tube. So the capillary tube has been made conducted uh, and the buffer will start to move electroosmotic mobility and the electrophoretic mobility with respect to the solute will be initiated. So dependent upon their charge to size ratio, the solutes will start to migrate towards the destination reservoir followed by the detector. So the detector is placed in between the destination reservoir and the source reservoir, particularly uh, near to the destination reservoir. Very before, very before the destination reservoir, the detector will be placed. So whatever the solutes, whatever the solutes getting eluted from the capillary tube uh, will be detected by means of this detector, which is present before the destination reservoir. So this is about the instrumentation uh, part of capillary electrophoresis. So it is very, very uh, uh, important to understand the dimensions of capillary tube, uh, the features of capillary tube, what type of capillary tube we can use in capillary electrophoretic technique. Normally, the capillary tubes are made by few silica. Capillary tubes are made by silica. And the outer surface of the capillary tube the outer surface of the capillary tube, you can see that by black color, the circumference of the capillary tube has been coated by the black color, which is having a thickness of 20 to 35 micrometer. The outer surface of the capillary has been coated by fused silica, uh, 20 to 35 uh, micrometer thickness of polyamide coating will be seen uh, in the capillary tube. And this polyamide coating is made in order to maintain a mechanical stability. So mechanical stability is very, very important in order to get protected from the sunlight or other uh, in, uh, variable experimental uh, parameters so that the condition of the capillary tube must be intact, it should not be changed. So the outer surface of the capillary, the outer surface of the capillary has been coated by polyamide of thickness 20 to 35 micrometer. And here you can see the internal diameter. This is the bore of the capillary tube, the internal diameter. The ID of uh, the capillary or the bore will be around 25 to 75 micrometer. <coughs> 